Welcome back everyone for another month of champagne. We're looking at some fantastic varietals that don't really get much airtime, and I'm gonna run you through two producers that are specialists in this area and uh, we're gonna dive right into it. I've nicknamed or given the, the title of this month the Magnificent Seven, okay? Now it's actually uh, an old Western from the 60s and um, uh, based on a very iconic film called The Seven Samurai, okay? And I love that because um, these guys were the seven ronins uh, or hired samurais uh, used to, to protect a village. And in this instance, that my samurai are the great varieties. So we're gonna work through all of them as each characters, okay? Um, the first three you all know, okay? You've had plenty of uh, Blanc, de, Blanc de Noir with Pinot Noir, okay? You would have had plenty of those. You would have had, or in a blend, you would have had plenty of Pinot Meunier, either as a single varietal or in a blend. And you definitely would have had heaps of Chardonnay, uh, either as a Blanc de Blanc or in a blend. The other four varieties are Arban, Petit Melier, Pinot Blanc, and Pinot Gris. We'll start with Pinot Gris because it's a good reference point for you all. I think you all have had a glass of Pinot Gris in your life. I certainly have. And if you haven't had Pinot Gris, you've had Pinot Grigio or other uh, forms thereof. Pinot Gris is, um, in terms of the total plantings that these four uh, grapes represent, it's only 0.3%, okay? I just wanted to just slide that straight in there. The others represent, the other three, um, Pinot Noir Chardonnay and Pinot Meunier represent 99.7. So it's a very, very small quantity we're talking about. Pinot Gris is um, a pink skin variety and it really adds a lot of richness and aroma to what's going on in the champagne. Then we've got Pinot Blanc, okay? And Pinot Blanc is also quite aromatic, but it's got this lovely sort of dry, stony uh, mineral note to it, okay? Both are descendants of Pinot Noir, okay, if you're looking at the sort of grand scheme of things, and uh, one of them basically doesn't have the pigment at all, which is the Blanc, and then the Gris is a mutation of Pinot Noir, so that's why it's pink skinned. Then we'll move on to probably the rarest of them all, a variety called Arban, all right? If you've ever seen um, pictures at the Bollinger Estate, uh, they have some vines planted in their estate, of which are Petit Melier, Arban, and uh, Pinot Gris and Pinot Blanc, because it's um, sort of an ancestry thing, going back to many, many years um, that these varieties were grown. Arban is very difficult to grow. It's an early budding and late ripening and meticulously difficult to ripen. And when it does, it still has very high acid, okay? So they only use that sort of where they can, but you've got to get it right with Arban. The next variety we're going to look at is Petit Melier. And Petit Melier is probably one of the most obscure sort of varieties to look at. And it's quite similar to Arban and Pinot Blanc in terms of its acid profile. It's really quite tart and green and herbal in its style. Um, it's actually a relative of Gouet Blanc and Sauvignon. So if you guys drink Jura, Jura wines, you will know what Sauvignon is. And Gouet Blanc is one of the, the parents of it. Um, the flavors are often quite vegetal, as I mentioned, similar to like a Sauvignon Blanc, and they've got this sort of, sort of that tart herbal edge. The, um, but the major benefit is that it's frost resistant, okay, which is a great thing to have in Champagne because frosts uh, were there this year, in fact. Now, a really interesting story uh, is that um, there's actually a house by the name of Duval Le Roi, okay? You guys would have seen this house before. We've actually featured it in the club before. We did their Prestige Rosé. Uh, they grow a 100% Petit Melier that they make a vintage wine from only when the years are like really, really high quality. And they've been doing this, yeah, since 1998. So, um, for me, that's a very interesting thing for a relatively big house to be doing something like that, just from a little village in the Marne. Other producers that uh, work with Petit Melier uh, are Talant, which may be coming to a club theme in the future. Uh, and they have a wine called Bam, okay, with um, 
uh, Pinot Blanc, Arban and Melier, which is what that BAM stands for. And then you've got a few other producers um, by the name of Geoffroy, he uses it in a field blend, and Aubrey Effie, they've had some as well. So really interesting, great variety. And because it can produce quite high acidity, even in the warmest of years, it could be a really interesting grape for global warming and the way things are sort of heading with our environment. Who knows? So the first house we're gonna look at is uh, C.H. Picone. Now, I, I did discover these guys many moons ago, just over a glass, as you do in Champagne with friends. And uh, it stayed in my mind because they had this uh, freshness to them. Now, they're a really young domain. They started in 2014. It's run by a husband and wife team, Clement and Agathe. And um, if you're looking at the map, they're in a region called neuville sur seine which is quite south in the Côte de Bar, rich with all the clay and sort of limestone soils that, that tend to penetrate in that area. Now, C uh, stands for Charles, okay, who's the um, grandfather of, of the estate. Now, he was the one who managed to, to get the land, actually, but from my understanding, wasn't too much happening at that time. And then his father, or Clement's father, Hubert. Hubert stepped in after many years and he started to mark out the vineyards and um, do some trellising and really bring the, the vineyards up to speed. Okay, now we've got Clement and Agathe taking over the, the domain and really making some fantastic varietals uh, from here. This one we're gonna be looking at is called the Three Cepage. So tasting this wine, the first thing I notice when pouring is uh, it's beautiful color, it's sort of like a golden pinkish hue. The bubbles are really quite fine. And as you see them rising to the glass, they're just perfect tiny bubbles. Great quality indicator for me. Um, one of the things that I picked up straight away was this sort of musk uh, character with some orange peel and this very definite sort of wet stone character. And that's really, for me, talks so much about place. Um, leading onto the palette, that stony sort of mineral component carried on. And what I had was this lovely dimension of um, sort of that salinity, some freshness, and um, the fact that it was really showing a sense of place. Being brut nature or zero dosage, no, no sugar added whatsoever, it's as pure and as clean as you get. Um, this is a, is a great reflection of what's happening. You can see the varieties with Pinot Noir taking the lead, um, I think at 30%, uh, and then you've got, sorry, 40%, and then you've got Pinot Blanc at 35, and Chardonnay is the supporting role in this one. So really quite an interesting and uh, delicious champagne. So the next house, which is deemed for all of our connoisseurs in the club, is Percival Farge, okay? These guys started in 1808. They are now fifth generation run by Benoit and Isabelle. They are, they're in a premier crew village called Chamery, and um, that's in the Montagne de Rams. Okay, there's lots of amazing villages around there. Very sort of good for Pinot Noir, but they're doing some great things with Chardonnay, and they've got a certain sort of style with their fruit that rich really comes through. They do have six UD or parcels, of which one of them, Le Goulat, is what we're gonna look at in the club. And I'll go into the tasting that in a moment. But Benoit talks about these varietals in a way that uh, you know really quite inspired me. And I wanted to just read out his, his notes to you. So he says, we wish to bring a little extra soul by rediscovering the forgotten varietals, including Arban, Petit Melier, uh, and Pinot Gris. These great varieties, despite being uh, a bit capricious, all develop an incomparable organoleptic richness. The Arban reveals olfactions of mandarin and bergamot and juniper, while the Petit Melier evokes light notes of lime and violet. 
Finally, the nose of Fromento suggests aromas of dried fruits and smoked aromas. Paradoxically, these forgotten grape varieties can bring innovations to these exceptional cuvées. It sort of sums up a lot of his philosophy as well. He's always thinking, whilst I love the past, I'm thinking of the future and what it can bring. So the wine we're looking at for the connoisseurs this month is called Le Goulat, okay? It is a Ludi, which means a parcel, a single parcel. And in this Ludi is Chardonnay, Arban, Petit Melier, and Pinot Gris, okay? So we've got a real mix in this, and I, I love the style. So about 46% is Chardonnay, and 54% and is, is the remainder. It is actually fermented in oak. And it's interesting that they've used that because the, the high searing sort of acidity almost offsets, or the oak sort of offsets a little bit of that acid. So you've got this richness in the background, but this bright, bright, bright freshness in the, in the foreground. Um, for me, I get lots of this, um, and it's all coming from the 2013 harvest with a little reserve wine from 2012. So a bit of age on it too. Uh, on the nose for me it was like this stony, bitter lemon, almost like a tonic water vibe when I first opened it, followed by quince and a herbal saline play. Then as soon as I had a taste, it was a big rush of flavours, like a waterfall. I got this sort of flow on effect of the quince, plus we've got some green pear, some juicy citrus, and that sort of just dances on the tongue. The bright acid profile and the incredible length and, and vivacity of the wine really says to me that this is not your usual style of champagne. There's something else going on. And those high acid varieties like Petit Melier and Arban that we spoke about earlier really show through in this. So to conclude this month, you're getting two amazing champagnes that have six uh, varieties of the permitted seven. Uh, you'll be seeing uh, you know, the grapes that you've never really seen before and hopefully it will create a lasting memory and impression. There will be some available to purchase afterwards. If you do, you wanna go back to the site, do share your moments on socials, which are shared here. And um, if you are uh, wanting to cook some of the food suggestions, feel free to do so and uh, uh, tag us in that as well. Until next month, have a great time, enjoy the wines and see you then. Can I do that? Actually, can I put, put that on camera? Pronounced bergamot. And uh, <laughs> <that's> awesome. <laughs> yeah, come on, bring it. Let's do it. <laughs> it's that Friday feeling on a Thursday. Done. done.